What part did you play in the recent local elections, Mr. Rienzi? You got me mixed up with somebody else, Senator. I'm in a cement and contracting business. What would you say your earnings are per year? Around 20 or 30,000. Say 30,000. You've got a $60,000 home here, a winter place in Miami, a summer place in Maine, two limousines, a sailboat worth 50,000. All on $30,000 a year. How do you do it, Mr. Rianzi? Sometimes I wonder myself, Senator. <laughs> it was testified here yesterday that you were paid $200,000 in cash to uh, influence the election. Yeah, I read that in the papers. Now, if somebody will only tell me where all that money you is hiding. You meddling in the election? Does it look like it? After all, you got elected, didn't you, Senator? man keeps getting undressed without pulling down the shades. Well, what's your complaint, madam? Boy? Here. Well, what you with? No. well, from the condition of the body, she'd been soaking in the river for several days. This fur coat she wore was all she had on. Well, maybe she was a rich society matron. Mm -hmm. Mink isn't class conscious, Sonny. No. no other clothes, no identification. Well, Mr. Hutchison wants to see you in his office, sir. Boy! about the Rienzi story, George? The boss wants to check it first. <laughs> One column had three line bank. AP says the paper's being sold. Huh? What? So, who to? When? What about that, Frank? That's something only the garrison heirs, Hutchison and the guards would know, not us. It's a conspiracy to keep you just as you are, nice and ignorant. So, I can't believe it. Don't believe the Associated Press? My, my. Maine, 2000. Better run for your lives, men. You don't forget to trample the women, loud mouth. Record? Give me the city desk. Look, who's the boss? Who says what goes in the paper? The managing editor, Mr. Hutchison. Then he's the man I want to see. Well, right now, he's busy in the bird dog. Why don't you sit down, if you don't mind? He's still in a makeup contract. Call, call it. Credit controls, inflation to be halted, billions. Yes? Frank Allen, urgent. OK. Billions required. National budget, OPS, NAM, ECA. What's all this mean to the reader? Consumption tax. <laughs> Sounds like a disease. It'll be page one in every paper in the country. And on the day, too, what does this tax program mean to the average man and woman? Not billions. That's an impossible figure. Here, break it down. Yes, sir. What it cost a housewife for groceries? How much more for a car, a radio? Fifty bucks, a hundred? How much? Run the story as is, page one, new lead for the second edition. Right. United Press flood story in same slot? Pictures come in yet? With casualty lists. All right. Yes, Frank. Hey. What about the dead nude murder story? Is it murder? Looks like it. Looks like it. Who is she? I don't know yet. Got some pictures of her, though. Very interesting. Put them on postcards and send it to Paris. Second section, play it down. No pictures. Yes, sir. Story's fine, George. Tie it off. Yes? You're late for the dome. OK. You leave tonight to handle that strike upstate? Well, I'd like to stay with the Rienzi story. You're wasting your time, baby. Not if we can prove he's guilty. It's not our job to prove he's guilty. We're not detectives, and we're not in the crusading business. Give me a week. Forget it. The state senate couldn't prove anything, neither could that probe four years ago. You've had a nice circus, that's all. Television's had a field day, all the papers raised their circulation, and Rienzi's lawyers got richer. One week. Three days. Please, I got a good lead. All right. Stay out of trouble. Ed. That's right, Frank. Baby's on the auction block. 
But we're the best outfit in town, in the country, maybe. But why? Why sell? Money? That's usually the reason something is sold, isn't it? Tell them I'm on my way up. The heirs and the lawyers are up in the dome right now, waiting to explain the nature of their crime with facts, figures, and falsehoods. One more F and they won't be drafted. But, Mother, the paper belongs to us. Why do we have to go to court to sell it? Perhaps because he never intended it to be sold. Oh, please, Mother. We've been over that a hundred times. The surrogate's court will decide that, Mrs. Garrison. Ed. Mrs. Garrison. What kept you so long? How's the expectant mother? Lousy. Hello, Ed. Alice. You're looking very well. Thank you. How's your husband? Oh, fine. Just fine. It's fine, isn't it? Let's get this over with. I suppose you know why we're here, Mr. Hutchison. Practically everybody seems to know, except the people who work here. We're sorry about that. We thought it best to make a general announcement discreetly. The death of a newspaper is never discreet. Here we go again. The last will and testament of the late John Garrison, drawn up just prior to his death 11 years ago, designated as his heirs, his eldest daughter, Alice, his daughter, Catherine, and his wife, Margaret. Inasmuch as Catherine attained her majority last week and became entitled to a full vote, it was decided by the three stockholders... Decided? That... Unanimously? Of course. Um, any objections? Would it make any difference? None. And I have no objections. The reason it was decided Must to we go into detail? Continue. I don't feel well. My entire staff feels the same way. Oh, Ed, what do Alice or I know about newspapers? Gives you an income. We never even come down here except twice a year for You're meetings. invited every day. Mrs. Courtney's husband feels the money could be invested more wisely elsewhere. John Garrison founded this paper, not Mrs. Courtney's husband. We're taking care of you, Ed. What? We always try, anyhow. You ought to get 1% of the sale price. Your share will amount to slightly more than $50,000. Uh, thank you. You're to notify all personnel they will receive two weeks' pay. Wait a minute. Meantime. This sounds as if we're being closed down. Who's buying the day? What difference can it make? To the 1,500 people who work for you, it makes a lot of difference. Well, who is buying it? Or are you ashamed of it? Lawrence White is the buyer. White? We're being sold to the standard. Oh, I think I'm going to farm. So do I. Mr. White's paper is very successful. It will undoubtedly make this one more profitable, too. It won't be this paper anymore. It'll be lost in the standard. As far as we're concerned, his offer is a generous one. He's only buying our circulation features and goodwill. He's eliminating his competition, that's all. Mrs. Garrison, you've got to stop them. Your husband created a new kind of journalism, and you helped him. Take a look at the first paper you ever printed. Here, page one, quote, this paper will fight for progress and reform. We'll never be satisfied merely with printing the news. We'll never be afraid to attack wrong, whether by predatory wealth or predatory poverty. You're not selling the day, you're killing it. The hearing to approve the sale will take place in surrogate's court day after tomorrow. You'll be there, of course. I never go to funerals. I think I like that man. Too excitable. Much. It might be advisable to replace him until the sale is consummated. Oh, shut up. Please. In the pink. Yeah. What happened? One punch, six pushes, two kicks, lots of hollering, no decision. Henry? Well, I was sitting there minding my own business. He's been asking for it. Heard a rumor, quit without notice, took a job with the record. A rumor? Well, how about it, Mr. Hutchison? Is it a rumor? We have a right to protect ourselves, haven't we? Well, go ahead. Tell us we got nothing to worry about. Day after tomorrow, when Surrey gets caught, you got two weeks' pay coming to you. The paper's closing. You can quit now and look for another job, or wait for the probate judge's decision. It's up to you. 
There's nothing personal, Mr. Hutchison. I, I have my family to think about. That's right, Henry. Nothing personal. Oh, Mr. Hutchison, the mayor wants... I'm busy. What are you going to do? I got an assignment. Harry? There's still a sports page to get out. Fighting. A man your age did me good. He was right to quit. They all ought to quit. Maybe. Anyway, I got it out of my system. You were with the New York World, weren't you? Under Pulitzer, Cobb, and Barrett. What'd you do when it folded? Let's see now. I think I got myself a drink. Yep, I'm sure of it. Then what'd you do? Came over here and went to work for old man Garrison. He was a great newspaper man. Yeah, but no good as a father. Terrible. Daughters. One of them married to a high-class broker who knows how to invest their money more wisely. They hate the paper, same as they hated the old man. Couldn't get at him when he was alive, so now they're kicking him when he's dead. Yes? Five minutes to press time. Okay, come in. Everybody in this racket gets kicked sooner or later, dead or alive. Get that in the fudge box. Yes, sir. Uh, the mayor... Darn the mayor! Yes, sir. The mayor. All he cares about is who'll support him for re-election if we fold. By now, the boys will be having a nice, lively week in O'Brien's. Ever been to one? Before you know it, lads, you won't be feeling a thing, not a blessed thing. That's what a week is for. Jordan from a weekly scandal sheet and asked old John Garrison for a job. Are you a journalist or a reporter, he said. What's the difference, I said. <laughs> a journalist makes himself the hero of the story. A reporter is only the witness. <laughs> Sister Bondola. Sister Bondola, has the spirit moved the research department? <laughs> <laughs> the spirit's moved her, all right. <laughs> Box. Sister Willibrand. Coming through the rye. Present and uh, half the counter. Hey! Hey! Come on, honey. Give us a soul talk. It's a lovely corpse. The last poor dear. I knew it well. And why not? I gave it the best 14 years of my life. And what have I got to show for it, huh? Eighty-one dollars in the bank. Two dead husbands and... And two or three kids I always wanted, but never had. I've covered everything from electrocutions to love nest brawls. I've got fallen arches, unfixed teeth, and you want to know something? I, I never saw Paris. But, but I wouldn't change those years. Not for anything in this world. I see the light, brother. Hey! Hey! Purify your soul, sinner. Save your tears. This is what the readers want. No, 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 no. Throw the atheist out. Don't sell it short. It's got twice our circulation and three times our advertising line. It's wild and yellow, but it's not exactly a newspaper. It keeps its people working. Hallelujah. Well, maybe if I'd given you this kind of paper, you'd still have jobs. There's a place for this kind of sheet. Where, Daddy? All right, so it's not your kind of paper. Who are we putting out papers for? You? 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 Not enough anymore to give them just news. 
They want comics, contests, puzzles. They want to know how to bake a cake, win friends, and influence the future. Ergo, horoscopes, tips on the horses, interpretation of dreams so they can win on the numbers lotteries. And if they accidentally stumble on the first page, news. You know, I never got to Paris either. Have some anesthetic, brother. I've been trying to see you all day, sir. I said I'd find you here. This will introduce me, sir. It's from my journalism professor at the university. Oh, so you want to be a newspaper man? Yes, sir. One student a semester is recommended. And you're it? Yes, sir. A newspaper man is the best profession in the world. You know what a profession is? It's a skilled job. <laughs> Yeah, so is repairing watches. Nope. A profession is a performance for public good. That's why newspaper work is a profession. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, uh, I suppose you want to be a columnist. Foreign correspondent to Egypt. Uh, you speak Arabic? No, sir, but... But you do know the customs, habits, religion, superstitions of the people. Well, I took a course in Near Eastern religion. You know the psychology of Egyptian politics and Muslim diplomacy? No, sir. Expert on economy, topography, and geography of Egypt? I speak a little French. Maybe I could get a job in the... <laughs> yeah, so do I, but I couldn't hold down a job in my own Paris office. I see. Hey, Joe. So you want to be a reporter. Here's some advice about this racket. Don't ever change your mind. It may not be the oldest profession, but it's the best. Yes, sir. <laughs> Why don't you go home, Ed? Yes, ma'am. Guess what? Scotch. I have decided to dedicate my life to you. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. That's why I'm going to give you the best years of my life. Mm -hmm. What's the matter with you? You're a skeptic. Hmm? A skeptic. Yes, dear. White beer? Homogenized. Couldn't we spike it with a little scotch? Drink that, as is. Nora, I love you. Let's get married again tonight. Could bring on my second childhood. It already has coming here this time of night. Nora, I'm free. Fired, canned. No more paper. Nothing to keep us apart anymore. 
The paper has been sold. I know. Divorce is a very evil thing, Nora. Down from my Olympian heights I come humbly. I'm going to make a decent woman of you again, Nora. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. We'll go on a second honeymoon. We never had a first. No, I'm leveling, baby. There's no more paper. Travel. That's what we'll do. Europe, South America, everywhere. No worry about expense. I am loaded. So I noticed. I mean money. More money than we've ever had in our lives. I was paid off for being a good boy. Ed, listen. You shouldn't have come here. It won't work out. It... Yeah. Not bad copy. Not bad at all. How is the advertising business? You know, you were right to quit the newspaper. Now you've got something you can depend on. Something legitimate. I went to a wake tonight. Saw the light, sister. Hallelujah. Why should I fight? For what? Publishers don't care about the paper. The paper doesn't care about me. And I don't care about anybody except you. Haven't I met him somewhere before? Just now, in the living room. Oh, yeah. Fight? What with? I'm an employee, not a stockholder. Maybe I should have taken it to the readers. Ah! What do they care? You gotta have an issue for that. Red Hot Story. Nora? Right here, darling. Right here, darling. I don't have to think about anybody but us. Yes, dear. Well, we'll have some great times together like we used to. Remember that time in Saranac when everybody thought we weren't married, so we went out and got married? The second time. And the fishing trips we never went on and the hunting trips I promised you. We'll make them all this time. Yes, dear. Now I went up to Reno to try to stop the divorce. What is that you charged me with? Incompatibility. Incompatibility. That was a lie. They know where to reach you? Well, I don't have to account to anybody. Yes, dear. I don't like him. I'll think of a reason later. Good night, dear. Desk. What? Oh, hold it. Okay, go ahead. When did this happen? What time is it now? Six what? Six twenty. Where did it happen? Would you call the hospital? Are they sending an ambulance? Okay. Good morning, darling. Ed, I thought no one knew you were here. Where else would I go when I'm in trouble? Ed. Who slept here? It's time we had a talk, Ed. Oh, not now, baby. I'm in a hurry. That call was urgent. Dinner tonight? Why not every night? Alberta's place okay? Eight o'clock? I thought you were in a hurry. 
Did I have a pleasant time last night? Yes, dear. I did? Well, what do you know? I was making my round, sir. First, I didn't notice anything. And I heard a kind of low moaning coming from the road down there. Well, good morning. Automobile accident, eh? Get no, him to the hospital. I... Name? I said get him to the hospital. Wait a minute. My name is Burroughs. I work for the day. He runs it. Oh. Ben! He started banging me around when they got me in the car. How many were there? Three, maybe four. Well, what was it, three or four? I don't know. All right. I gave you a going over. What with? Fists. One of them hit me in the face with something hard, a sap, I guess. What did they say? Nothing. Not after they got me in the car. Before? Yes, outside the Hall of Records. I told you. Tell me again. Please, sir, he's... Shut up. Know. The Hall of Records. She went there to check on Rienzi. George. The man I talked to must have tipped Rienzi. Yeah, how do you know? He left the office for a few minutes. Probably phoned. Probably, but you're not positive. No. I won't stand up in court. Well, how else were they waiting for me when I came out? Who was waiting? Rienzi's men. You identify them? One, maybe. Former boxer, torpedo. Know his name? Whitey. I'm not sure Whitey something. If I brought him in, could you identify him? He asked me if I was Burroughs. He asked me if I worked for the day. What make car was it? I don't know. Sedan, blue, black, what? Oh, what are you trying to do, protect Rienzi? I want facts that won't bounce. Facts that'll stand up against Rienzi's lawyers and libel suits. Facts that'll tear Rienzi's syndicate wide open. It just can't be any mistake. We can't have any retractions. George. I'm afraid he may lose that eye. Mrs. Burroughs? Go away, Mr. Hutchison. Let us alone. Are you blaming me? Who sent him out? And for what? The great big fat glory of a newspaper? A paper you haven't even got anymore. Mr. Allen, one more. Today, good morning. One yes, sir. Put every man you can spare on the Rienzi story. Picture layout? The works. Where he gets his money is tie up, data, facts, facts, and more facts. The tough thing is to prove them, man. Prove them later. Charlie. Boy. Uh, City Morgue, uh, this is Willibrand of the day. Any identification yet on that nude in the fur coat? Mr. Barndollar, relax. Ever heard of Rienzi? Okay, now. Rienzi Tomas, 51, born Palermo, Sicily. Emigrated here, 1914. Attended public school, number 47. Has two children by legal wife, Gertrude. Uh, we're not proposing him for the Chamber of Commerce. We want to convict him of every known crime in the books, all of which he's committed, and some even you, even I, never heard of. I want everything. Yes, sir. I must have taken 20 shots of her as they were dragging her out of the river. That fur coat's worth five Jim. or six thousand dollars. Get your camera, cover Burroughs in the city hospital. George? Oh, George? That's right. You take Rienzi. His wife, home, cars, everything. What if he smashes the camera? He's done it before. Let him. You get pictures of him doing it. Go ahead. Bill. Bill, I want a cartoon on Rienzi. It's got to be hard, tough, below the belt. The vulture sucking the life out of a city. You got it? But a vulture only preys on the dead or the dying. Praise. Here's your caption. Let us pray. P-R-E-Y. Paper, paper. Why should I stick my neck out? I want it for the first edition. I don't like the idea. I get in a jam with Rienzi, and tomorrow the paper folds anyway. Where does that leave me? You're fired. Wait a minute. Pay him off and get him out of here. Why, the excitement. Everybody knows we're washed up. That's your mistake. But I worked here four years. That's my mistake. City Dad. Get you out there. Bentley, get your stenotype in there. Get Dr. Emanuel on the phone. Draw $500 out of my bank and get it over to Burroughs' wife. Mr. Bellamy here's been waiting. Oh, yeah. Rewrite desk, lobster ship. What's the lobster ship? 
After midnight, we serve a lot of spermidor naturally. Uh, page one editorial, ten point type, double column. Byline, set off in bold face will be John Garrison, quote, I am dead. I've been dead for 11 years. By tomorrow, this newspaper may also be dead. But as long as it lives, the day will continue to report the facts and the meaning of those facts without fear, without distortion, without hope of personal gain, as it always has done. Yes? Dr. Emanuel on two. Oh, hello, doctor. No, 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 I'm fine. Yeah, uh, I want to ask you a favor. A personal friend of mine needs your help. Uh, he's in the city hospital. Name is Burroughs, George Burroughs. What? What is more important, doctor? You're delivering a lecture in London or saving a man's eyesight. Well, cancel it. Well, then delay it. We weren't too busy to raise funds for your clinic. Well, certainly I'm putting it on a personal basis. What's a friend for, if not for a favor? Thank you. A real humanitarian. Uh, where was I? We'll continue to report the facts and the meaning of those facts. Oh, that sentence is too long. Break it down. Change the word distortion. Somebody might know what it means. Okay? Paragraph, quote, what are the facts? Rienzi stuffs your ballot boxes. Save the paper, this is it. Did you see the paper yet? Who's responsible? Hutchison. Well, talk to him. Why can't you? I want to meet him personally. Why not? Everybody can be reached. Remember, Judge? Give me a three-column lead, a two-line bank on that raid. Evening, Mr. White. Did you see this spread on Rienzi in the day? Yes, sir. What have you done about it for our paper? Done, sir. A reporter gets into a barroom brawl. They say it was Rienzi. But can they prove it? Pro prove it? Front page editorials, flashy cartoons. Why, it's old-fashioned, Mr. White. And what's so ultra-modern about this horse in our paper? Then give me some old-fashioned journalism in the standard. Yes, sir. Give me the city hospital. Sorry I'm late. You like it? It's the best-looking front page in town. As usual. The makeup, Thank you. the cartoon, the, the editorial under the name of Garrison, yours? Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. As usual. How are we? Are we as usual? Maybe the heirs will sit up and take notice. Of us? They won't sell the paper. Not now. Not in the middle of a fight like this. It'd be like endorsing Rienzi. It's a wonderful dress for dinner. You look much better than you did last night. How do you feel? Amorous. Good evening, Mrs. Hutchison. Good evening. Mr. Hutchison, your table's ready, sir. Will you order now? An appetizer first, perhaps? Oh, no, no, thank you. I have mine. Oh, just steak for me. Telephone, Mr. Hutchison. Tell him I'm feeding. They said it's important. Urgent, dear, as usual. Keep calling her, Mrs. Hutchison. Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Hutchison? Yes? This is Willebrand. I'm at the city morgue. The place where little girls check their fur coats. The 
a dead nude, what about her? Well, her mother showed up to identify her this afternoon as a, a Mrs. Schmidt. That's the girl's name, Bessie Schmidt. But she also used the name Sally Gardner. Why bother me? Write it. Well, what I wanted to know was this. Now, Alan said he thought I ought to check with you first, but, um... This Mrs. Schmidt knows a lot more than she's telling. No. No, but I thought maybe if you talked to her, you could get... Let's not be dramatic, Mrs. Willebrand. No, 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 I can't. You handle it. Fifi. She made a pass at me in the cloakroom. It's a way I have with women. I'm getting married again, Ed. That's right. I'm giving it to you straight and fast. You don't know the man. He's my boss at the advertising agency. First me, now another boss. It's getting to be a habit with you, isn't it? I'd like you to meet him. Uh, compare notes, you mean? Thanks, I know enough people already. His name is Lewis Shaver. I don't want to know anything about him. I told him all about you. Everything? Sit down. I'm not one of your modern husbands, chin up, stiff up a lip, and all that sort of stuff. Always ready to discuss things sensibly. There isn't anything to discuss. I don't need your consent. We're divorced, have been for years. I don't years. recognize the divorce. You agreed to it. I was wrong. You're my wife. Not only because somebody said a few words over us, but because of all we meant to each other for eight years. You can't change all that with more words, legal or otherwise. They want you on the telephone, Mr. Hutchison. No way. You want me to quit the paper? Okay, I'll get another job. Something... I, want you to quit I have anything. to go back today. Tomorrow it's over. It's right that you should go back. It's where you belong. You're the best newspaper man in the world. I don't want to change that. I never did. It's your whole life, and for you, it's right. But I've got to write it to a life, too, and you can't give it to me. Can he? Maybe. Can you be the same with him as you were with me? Is it that easy? Do you love him? No, you don't. Not the same way. Maybe love isn't enough to make a marriage work. Please, uh, Mr. Hutchison, I'm sorry to bother you again, but it's your office, Mr. Allen. He said if you won't come to the phone, then to come back to the paper. I'm sorry, sir. Yes? Yank what story? Willebrand's story on Sally Gardner. Well, it was pulled by our advertising department. It seems Mr. Andrew Wharton, president of Wharton's department store, was Sally's caviar ticket. Right. Right. Composing room. One column head, one bank on this weather report. Yeah? Jake, on Willebrand's story, Sally Gardner? Yeah. Hold it, but don't kill it. Do you worry about every story in our paper, Mr. Fenway? You just seem to me this was libelous material. We've got over a hundred stories in this issue. Check them all for libel? No, sir. Or any of them? No, sir. I see. You're a self-appointed censor only on stories involving big advertising. I was trying to protect us. Us, so you or Mr. Wharton, and for how much? He denies this story. Willow Brand included his denial. From there on, it's up to the police. I thought as a matter of policy that... Policy? We... Since when has the advertising department of this paper dictated its policy on news? I didn't act on my own. No, oh, you haven't got the guts, so you went to Wharton. Run the story. I talked to Alice Garrison. Mr. Wharton came here. We phoned her. It was on her authority. She hasn't got the authority, not until I'm out of here. Or have you arranged for that, too? No, sir. You're slipping. Will you talk to Mr. Wharton? He's waiting right in here. Mr. Wharton. This is Mr. Hutchison. How do you do, sir? 
May I give you my side of it? I'll take care of this. Please don't publish that story. Why? Isn't it true? It can't do you much good. And it'll ruin me and hurt my family. I've been doing business with your paper for 20 years. You're a big advertiser, Mr. Wharton. We need your business, but not on those terms. All right. I made a mistake with Sally. But that was 10 years ago, and I've paid for it in blackmail every month. I'm sorry, Mr. Wharton. This is a matter for the police. You are interested in facts, aren't you? One day, Sally phoned. She was quitting her job at the store. She was letting me off the hook. She said there was another man. Another man there always is. In this case, the man was Tomas Rienzi. Sally said she loved him, would never bother me again. She even sent back some damaging photographs of us. She said she was set for life. What does she mean by that? She didn't say. Surely you don't think I killed Sally. I haven't seen her in over two years. Mrs. Wharton knew about Sally. She suggested that I talk to you. Your paper forced me to come here, but now that I'm here, I don't know. Wharton, you can tell your wife I'm holding the story. Thank you, sir. But if that yarn about Rienzi doesn't gel... It will. It better for both our sakes. Jim. Uh, later, dear. What have you got on Sally Gardner? The furry blonde? Uh-huh. She was abroad. Yes, but who? Since when do you go in for gossip? Since now. Jim, was Rienzi playing around with Sally? What do you want? Proof. I want to be sure. From this, a fellow could catch a hole in the head. Yeah, he could. That bother you? Oh, no. No, no, no. Harry, you ever hear of Herman Schmidt? Small time stuff. Had some kind of a political job at the arena. Boxing judge, I think. Oh, yeah, I got him now. Brother of Sally Gardner. Sally may have been tied in with Rienzi. I know one thing. Rienzi's tied in with the boxing commission. Now, get a hold of Schmidt. Sweat him. About his job? How about Sally? Boy. Here's Willebrand's copy. See, all we've got on Sally is she was once a bathing beauty. One thing is short on is time. Sally and her brother were born here. Her mother came from Germany. Father dead. No known criminal record for Sally. No recorded marriages. Yes? I'm Mr. Lewis Schaefer to see you. Okay. Come on, Dollar. Yes, sir? Relax. If Lugerman's closed the financial page, ask him to come in. Yes, sir. Happy to meet you, Mr. Hudson. Yeah. Have those pictures? All right, here. Put them up here, chronologically. Sit down, Mr. Schaefer. Thank you, but what I have... Is... space for the missing period between Wharton and Rienzi. Yes, sir. Coffee, Mr. Schaefer? Sandwich? No, thanks. I didn't mean to interrupt your work. How's my wife? That's what I came to see you about. Shoot. Well... Nora asked you to come? Well, of course not. I thought that we could... Well, this is rather personal, Mr. Hutchison. In as much as it concerns my wife, I hope it's not too personal. You're making her very unhappy. Want me? Oh, look a minute. I want to report on all Rienzi's investments, legit and otherwise. Dummy corporations, everything. Real estate, manufacturing, investments. Whatever you can dig up. You got a starting point? Try the tax reports. Charlie in the governor's office may give you a hand. Right. Make it thorough. So I'm uh, making her unhappy, Mr. Schaefer. Let her alone. You're confusing her, making her feel guilty. Her responsibility to you is over. Well, then why are you here? I'm only trying to do what's best for Nora. Well, that's not only ridiculous, but insulting. You're not that much of a pride. Ed, here's the... Oh, excuse me. What have you got? Sally bought some government bonds. When? Five months ago. Sally or Rienzi? In her name. 40,000 worth. And it took some doing at this hour, but we've got a checkup working in every bank for savings accounts. Safety deposit boxes? That too. That's all we've got. Okay. Look here, Frank. Sally's a high school girl, model for Wharton's department store, showgirl, kept girl. 
Missing portion, the river. Now, if we can plug up this hole between Wharton's department store and the river, fill it up with Rianzi. Goodbye, Mr. Schaefer. I can't wish you good luck. You know how it is. There's something you ought to know, Mr. Hutchison. Yes? Jim Cleary on one. Yes, Jim. Nora and I are getting married tomorrow night. I thought it best not to delay any longer. You know how it is. Yes, yes, go ahead. Here, here it is, just what you've been looking for. Yeah. Rienzi's your boy, all right. Frank. Oh, it's the only show Rienzi backed. He insisted Sally be in it. I'm with Al Murray now. He says Rienzi used to send a car around for her every night after the show. Hold it. Switch this call to rewrite. Do you hear that, Cleary? Okay. Oh, Frank. On the Willebrand story, uh, kill the part about Wharton. Use Cleary's story for a lead-all. Throw in Sally's face. No nudity. Miss Bondollar. Yes, sir? I want a complete check on Lewis Schaefer, runs the United Advertising Agency. Schaefer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anything from Thompson yet? No, sir. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Schmidt. Don't move. I just want... Shut up. Take your hat off. Sit down. No, over there. on the table. Relax, Herman. I'm here to help you. Who's with you? Nobody. What's the pitch? My name is Thompson, reporter, sports, for the day. I'm... Don't do that! Sports, huh? What'd you write today? The question of televising next season's baseball games was discussed at a heated session of the Hot Stove League yesterday. What do you want? Would you mind putting that thing away? How did you find me? You know a lot of people in the fight game. They owe me favors. I collected a few. All right, get to it. Why did Rienzi kill your sister? Did he? Then who were you afraid of, Herman? Why the hideout? That won't get you anywhere. I phoned your address into the paper. They know I'm here. By the next edition, Rienzi will know where you are. We're your only chance, Herman. Let me take you to the paper and you'll be safe. Sooner or later, Rienzi will get to you and you'll wind up in the morgue beside Sally. As long as Rienzi is free, you're a dead pigeon. Take your time. Rienzi won't get his copy of the day with your address until morning. carefully read the last will and testament of the deceased, John Garrison. I find nothing therein to prevent the sale of the publication enterprises known as The Day. Your Honor, Mrs. Garrison, wife of the deceased and one of the heirs, would like to address the court. Mrs. Garrison? Sir, I object to the sale of this paper to Mr. White. 
Your Honor, if Mrs. Garrison has agreed... But this request for sale was signed by you, Mrs. Garrison. I've changed my mind. Mrs. Garrison's daughters have not, and they constitute a majority. My husband would not have wished this paper to be sold to Mr. White. How do you know? Your Honor, I, I object to that cross-examination until the witness has completed her statement. You knew the paper was being sold to Mr. White? But I did not know it was going to be rubbed out of existence, which it will be if this contract is approved. What happens to this newspaper after it has been sold is of absolutely no concern here. Is Mr. Crane the lawyer and the judge? This is a cheap display of sensationalism and conspiracy. Would the other heirs care to reconsider? No, sir. Would it be all right, Mr. Crane, if they answered for themselves? Mrs. Alice Garrison Courtney, do you still wish to sell? Yes, sir. Mrs. Catherine Garrison Geary. Yes, sir. In that case, the paper may be sold. Then I'll buy it. The contract already exists. But, Your Honor, Mrs. Garrison has priority of purchase. I'll raise Mr. White's offer. Your Honor, I cannot see that my client's Why interest... Why don't you should object to my daughters receiving more money? That's what they're selling out for, isn't it? Money? Well, the counsel kindly step up here. You can't do this. I can, I want to, and I'm going to. What good will it do? You'll be happy to know the stupidity is not hereditary. You've acquired it all by yourself. You're making us sound like fools. Well? What changed your mind? Have you seen today's paper? And yesterday's? Loyalty changed my mind. A principle evidently lacking in the present generation. You haven't got the money to buy the paper. I'll get it. You're crazy. No, just ashamed. Ashamed for me, for you, and for your father. I'm not going to let this paper die. That makes me crazy. I'm good and crazy. All right. I shall require time to consider Mrs. Garrison's request. Counsel will be notified when this court will reconvene. Sir. Mr. White. Any delay, even 24 hours, will wreck the value of the day. People will not buy a dying paper nor advertise in it. Now the staff of the day will become demoralized. No newspaper can function under this handicap. Thank you, Mr. White. However, I must reserve decision. But if the current high standard of journalism in the day slackens or any act of neglect threatens the well-being of this newspaper, I shall be forced to make an immediate decision based upon the current contract. Mr. Hutchison, my name is Hanson. Yes? I'm uh, Mr. Rienzi's lawyer. He's waiting to see you in his car. Why? It's personal business. A ride? No, sir, a drive. How do you do, Mr. Hutchison? Did I give you a lift someplace? Why? I'm the sociable type. They're expecting me at my office. Okay, Lippy. Okay, what? Just okay. I wondered when and how you'd get around to this. Yeah? Yeah, I expected something a little more poetic. Drink? <laughs> oh, now, that's rather poetic. Well, it'd be. Nothing. Not a drink of man? Not in an armored car. I think I like you. Why? Imagination. I like a man with imagination. You're a good newspaper man, they say. You're not bad at your trade, either. You got two Pulitzer Prizes, they say. Are they weight much? Cash, about $500 a piece. Your kind of imagination is weight more. I agree. But you're a hothead, they say. Who's they? Friends. I got friends everywhere. I like for you to be my friend. I got a friend. Not like me. Is that a proposal or a proposition? What do you got against me? <laughs> you're not my type. You ever meet me before? Do business with me. Or maybe you got the wrong impression of me. What kind of an impression would you like me to have? My family reads a paper. 
It's not nice what you print. I got a nice family. Sometime I'd like for you to meet them. No point in that, unless they're the ones that almost killed Burroughs. Burroughs? Never beat up a reporter, they say. It's like killing a cop on duty, they say. Never drop girls in the river, clothed or unclothed, they say. What have I got to do with reporters or girls? I'm in a cement and contracting business. Capone was in the insurance business. You got a sense of humor, friend. Well, why don't you laugh? Very funny. Tomorrow's newspaper will be even funnier. Uh, that's the Rienzi I like to see. This way you start shooting? What are you supposed to be, a little tin guard? You gonna save the world, a hero or something? There's only one kind of martyr, friend. Dead ones. Show me a martyr, I'll lay you four to one, he winds up out of the money. My lawyer says I can sue you for this. Well? What you're trying to do has been tried before. Nobody could ever make it stick. In that case, you got nothing to worry about. Thanks for the lift. I can't say I enjoyed it. Cops, tax collectors, politicians, citizens committees, they all got an angle. What's yours? Name it. What do you want? My prizes await more than Pulitzer's. I know. I gotta look at Sally's fur coat. Wasn't that Hermit Schmidt just went in? Yeah. Okay, from the beginning. First, see the money. Said you'd pay for the story. Five grand. One thousand dollars. How far would that get me? Out of the country after you testify against Rienzi, yes or no? Well, he said you'd protect me. These days, accommodations in jail are hard to get. However, I'll use my influence. <laughs> Well? All right. Get some sleep, and on your way out, have them send in a thousand dollars. In cash. In cash. Okay, you've got the floor. Where do you want me to start? Sally and Rienzi. Well, they liked each other. Liked? Well, you know. Rienzi pay her bills? What else? For everything? She was worth it. That's what I like. Family pride. Hey, Rienzi kicked in for the apartment, her fur coat, some cheap jewelry, maybe her car, too. But Sally bought $40,000 worth of government bonds in her name. Rienzi pay for that? I guess so. You're a liar. Sally used the $200,000 Rienzi gave it a hold for him. Why $200,000? Why would a guy part with that kind of scratch? Hot money. The city bank says your sister rented a safety deposit box. She gave it up a month ago. On the same day she moved out of her apartment. Why? All right, it's true. He gave her the money to keep for her. When he wanted it back, she was scared he'd make a break. She said as long as she kept the cash, it'd stick. Didn't work out that way. I don't feel so good. Have this type. More coming. Yes, sir. Miss Garrison wants to see you in the dome. Oh, stall her. Uh, here's that thousand dollars you wanted. Uh huh. Uh, Al, get yes, the sir. camera in there. Are you married, honey? Less of Very. Later, baby. Get hold of the governor. Ask him if he'll appoint a special grand jury to investigate the last election. Some of the names will come up. We supported a few for office. Well, this paper has no political party. We support men for office, some good, some bad. Mr. Hutchinson, Mr. Wilbrand's on here. If the governor won't act, uh, get the chairman of the state senate committee. Yes? Hutchinson. Oh, hold it. Now, go ahead, Wilbrand. Sally. So what about her? Where'd she move to? What hotel? 
When did you find out Sally was dead? Well, I... I read about it in the paper. She was dead three days before the papers got it. Your mother says you left the house last Saturday and didn't come back. Sally was killed that same night. So what? I leave the house lots of times for weeks sometimes. But not to hide out. You were afraid of Rienzi. Why? You knew he was going to Sally's place last Saturday. I didn't even know where she lived. Hold it. Shoot. Sally was moved from her apartment on Maple Avenue by the Intercity Storage Company four weeks ago. The Little Roy Hotel, registered under the name of uh, Bessie Schmidt. Never left her room. She had only two visitors, your mother and you. You were there Saturday night. Well, I don't remember. Maybe I was. Why did you go there? Well, I, uh... She phoned me. Yeah, that's right. She phoned me. The desk clerk says you phoned her from the desk, 1.30 a.m. He could be wrong. That's right. Somewhere out there, Rienzi's waiting for you. Either you tell the truth or I'll turn you loose. No money, no protection. Okay. Throw him out. Wait. Rienzi wanted his money. They couldn't find out where she was living. So you showed him. Why'd you do it? What did Rienzi promise? Well, he got me my job. I owed him some money. I couldn't pay him. He said the favor would square us. All you had to do was put the finger on your own sister. I didn't know what they were going to do, I swear. Who went with you, Rienzi? I went alone. So she wouldn't be afraid to let you in? They came later. All you did was open the door for them, that's all. Who's they? Lefty Smith, Whitey Franks, and Kid Jones. They belong to Rienzi? Except Whitey, he hired us out. You let them in, then what? Well, they asked her for the money. She wouldn't give. So Whitey, he hit her. Then Lefty, she began to scream. She hollered for me to help her. And Whitey, he shut her up. I got scared. I couldn't watch what they were doing. I ran into the bathroom. I beat it out of there. That's all I know, honest. Yes? Mrs. Garrison still waiting. One left the other. I'll be right up. The word was out Rienzi wanted me. They was afraid I was going to sing. If I stay for the trial, they'll get to me. You don't know them. In jail. No matter With where, anyway. typed, have him sign it. We won't have time to get this all in the bulldog. We'll get the text of the statement in the second edition. Count it. Count it. And have this office fumigated. Mr. Hutchinson, about Lewis Schaefer. Oh, yeah. On that information you requested. Uh-huh. Uh, Lewis Schaefer, age 42, born in Baltimore, only child of John and Harriet Schaefer of the chemical fortune. Was he ever married before? No, sir. Ever get pinched? Was he ever arrested? No record if he was. Alcoholic? Swindler? Maybe he's a fiend. You know, he looked like one. Check his army record? Maybe he's a spy. Got the silver star and the purple heart. That's a rotten report. Yes, sir. Eddie, two things. Rienzi started his libel suit. He was over the papers half an hour ago. Second? Judge McKay is going to hand down his decision tonight at nine. Because the libel suit? Mm -hmm. We'll be ready for him. And another thing. That one percent you were promised when we sold the paper. Well, Alice and Kitty have withdrawn it. <laughs> what took them so long? Mm -hmm. You were wonderful today, baby. Oh, Mr. Blake and Mr. Green, this is Mr. Hutchinson. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do, sir? Green. The banking firm has offered to lend us the extra money to meet Mr. White's offer. Uh, pending a few packs, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Try to remember Rienzi's exact words when he asked you to bring the three hoods to Sally's hotel room. We can get that. We've got a warrant here for Herman Schmidt. We're not finished yet. We want him to sign the statement. It'll only take a few minutes. Come along, Schmidt. You've got no right to take statements. As long as it's not a police state we have. Sorry. Whitey. Shut up. Take him out the back way, don't I didn't tell him anything. Whitey, I didn't tell him anything. And that doesn't include the higher cost of newsprint. How's that? Keeps going up. Right now, it's $110 a ton. In 1942, it was $50 a ton. 
takes talent to get the news, think it through, write it, and back it up with research. Without good reporting, you haven't got a paper. Well, that extra 4% might make it a dangerous venture. A free press sale, like a free life, is always in danger. the proposition. Barring unforeseen complications, I think we and can... And for you. Yeah? Give him a description of what that so-called police look like. Yes, Captain. When's the press gonna grow up and stop playing detective? Can't you tell the difference between a hoodlum and a cop? In this town? Yes, sir. Captain. At the address? I'll see that Mr. Garrison gets home all right. What about Schmidt's confession? Do we run anyway? Without his signature? The judge would surely close us down. Made a mess of it. I told you I don't want no violence. Not yet, anyway. There's a time and place for this kind of thing. This is stupid. No. No, run away from what? I'll talk to them myself, personally. Get them down here to my office, all of them. Sure, now, right now, you too. Find Sally's old lady, Mrs. Schmidt. Bring her in. I want to talk to her. And this time, don't foul it up. No paper ever did a better, faster, more thorough job. All we needed was that one bit of evidence. And we had it. Why do you think we hung the whole thing on Rienzi's case? Because we were sentimental about a dead girl in a mink coat? No. <laughs> and we had something big. Big enough to save our necks. The Enzi in the liquor business, the financial department dug that one up. Distributed for two of the biggest name brands. Rienzi's brother runs a wire service for race results, transportation. Loan agency for bookies, real estate, hotels, nightclubs. Slot machines, etc., etc. Years ago, my husband tried to do a story like this on a man just like Rienzi. No, I figured with a story like this to tell, they'd never close us down. Well, we showed him how a real newspaper can function. And now, we're licked, baby. Put a head on this, will you? My husband always said it was a worthwhile fight, didn't matter who won. Some good was sure to come out of it. That Rienzi's wine? Uh huh. Pretty good. <laughs> the best. Ah, oh, you're quite a girl. Yeah. If they made them different in your day. Yeah. More durable. More pliable. Girls these days have stuff, but they're brittle. Break more easily. Don't roll with the punches. <laughs> Plenty of gall and no guts. Meaning Nora? Uh, meaning Nora. Well, now be a respectful silence while we feel sorry for ourselves. Well, she had no right to walk out on me. Why not? Well, because. Because it inconvenienced you. Because she's my wife. You wouldn't have had a wife of that newspaper. It had beautiful legs. Sure, sure. But you never walked out on John. Who said so? Twice. You must have had a pretty good reason. The best. 
A bride always likes to think she's indispensable. Even in the morning, I woke up and he was gone. Gone back to the paper to do the Lusitania story. I walked out. Ah, but you came back. Two days later, he didn't even know I'd been gone. But he loved you. Passionately, between editions. He had time to change the face of journalism, fight for reform, crusade for a thousand lost causes, but he had no time for his family. So I took my two daughters and left this big, beautiful mausoleum. Why did you come back? Well, we needed each other. It was I who did the adjusting, though. It wasn't Alice or Kitty or John. He needed a son to carry on the paper. And they needed a father in love, not a bulldog edition. Enter me. Spit an image. <laughs> hey, what did you want? To be useful. Well, to newspapers. To editors like you, the publisher's delight. Don't blame Nora. Unless she wants to come back, it won't work. If she stays away... <laughs> I can look for a newspaper with nice legs. <laughs> Court convenes in about half an hour. Are you going to be there? Maybe. Will you marry me? <laughs> You're too old. <laughs> You go through old Lady Schmidt's house? Top to bottom. Well? Nothing. Mrs. Schmidt, you find her? Not yet. Got anybody at the house waiting for her? Inside and out. Don't bring her here. I don't want none of your boys around here. Now or any time, you understand? I understand. And don't phone me. Here or at home. Any of you. Would it be better if we left town for a while? No. We stay put. Suppose the grand jury indicts. Leave them indicts. Larry will take care of things. I'll try. That's right. You'll try. I don't want no panic. If there's an investigation, or even a trial. We've been through this kind of thing before. We're still in business. A story's printed in the paper. So what? Tomorrow it's old news. Next week people forget. But if they keep printing? They won't. But if they keep us in the news until the trial, if they heat up the public? You take care of your end. I'll handle the paper. Hutchison won't handle easily. He's got nothing. With Schmidt out of the way, what's he got? That won't stop him. And he won't stop us. Tomorrow he won't even have a paper. Courts will take it away from him. And if they don't, we'll take him away from the paper. Maybe they all need an example. Yeah, that's what they need. You better find Hutchison. You want to see him? No. His Honor, the surrogate. Please be seated. I'm a little bit worried about this. Don't let him get any idea there's any doubt in your mind about settlement. Any there's any doubt in your mind about settlement. Regarding the sale and purchase of the publishing company, herein referred to as the day, I've made a careful study of the existing contract between the heirs of the late John Garrison and Lawrence White Publishing Enterprises. I can see no reason why this contract should not be enforced. Therefore, unless further evidence or argument is presented to alter my judgment, the court is prepared to render its decision. Mrs. Garrison, do you have anything to add? No statement, Your Honor. Your Honor! Before you decide, may I say something? If Your Honor, please. I don't think this gentleman is one of the heirs. He's not here as amicus curiae, and I'm positive he's not here in the interests of Mr. White. Whom does he presume to represent? Well, sir, I'm trying to save a newspaper. Which is not yours in the first place. That is true. The day consists of a big building. I don't own that. 
It also consists of typewriters, teletypes, presses, newsprint, ink, and desks. I don't own those either. But this newspaper is more than that. We're all aware of what a newspaper consists. I'm not so sure about that. The day is more than a building. It's people. It's 1,500 men and women whose skill, heart, brains, and experience make a great newspaper possible. We don't own one stick of furniture in this company. But we, along with the 290,000 people who read this paper, have a vital interest in whether it lives or dies. This is highly irregular procedure. So is the murder of a newspaper. Aren't you carrying this a bit too far? The death of a newspaper sometimes has far-reaching effects. Meaning your own pocketbook in this case. In this case, meaning some unfinished business called Rienzi. If you read the day, you'd know what I mean. I don't care to discuss Mr. Rienzi. This newspaper does. This doesn't concern us here today. It concerns the public every day. A newspaper, as Mr. White will agree, is published first, last, and always in the public interest. Yours is not the only newspaper in town. Right now, it's the only newspaper willing to expose Rienzi. Your Honor. An honest, fearless press is the public's first protection against gangsterism, local or international. Mr. Hutchinson, though a surrogate's court is informal, there are certain rules and procedure. May we have your decision now, sir? As one of your 290,000 readers, Mr. Hutchison, I rule that you may proceed with your statement. Thank you, sir. But let's try to keep this from becoming a personal matter, please. Well, the newspaper is a very personal matter, sir. Ask the people who let us in their homes. I've read the day for more than 35 years. Before that, I sold it in the streets. However, here, we're only concerned with the legal aspect of the sale and purchase of property. What happens after Mr. White takes possession is outside of the jurisdiction of this court. Well, and whose jurisdiction is it? Just a moment. Since when is it immoral for someone to legally purchase a newspaper? I don't care if Mr. White buys and runs two papers or 20 papers or 100 papers. Some of the best newspapers in this country are part of a chain. But I do care when he buys a newspaper to put it out of business. Because without competition, there could be no freedom of the press. And I'm talking about free enterprise, Your Honor. The right of the public to a marketplace of ideas, news, and opinions. Not of one man's, or one leader's, or even one government's. I... Well, I guess that's all I have to say. The existing contract is valid. Made in good faith. As of tomorrow, November 14th, the Lawrence White publications will assume control of the day. Court adjourned. Well, thanks for trying. It'll be another day. Goodbye, Ed. Goodbye. Here, Mr. Hutchison. I have the city desk. Frank, here it is. Lead off for the morning edition. The day after 47 years of daily publication was sold last night. Ed, get back here as quick as you can. You will give it to me over the phone. I'll be right there. Five minutes. Did you care to state who killed your daughter, Mrs. Schmidt? Was it Rienzi? Some of his men. I come to see boss. Did you know your son was working for Rienzi? Was that Hutch? Do you think we ought to call the police? I'm worried about her. The paper's been sold. I had a new lead. Have you been to your home yet, Mrs. Schmidt? Where have you been? I speak to boss. Mrs. Schmidt wandered in on her own. 
looking for you won't talk to anyone else. Mrs. Schmidt, the boss. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Schmidt? Your name, please? Hutchison. I am mother to Bessie. Oh, uh, about your son. I'm very sorry. I do not come for that. Sit down, please. Here. My Bessie, she comes to me and she says, Here, Mama, you keep this. If something happens to me, you do not have to worry. This Bessie's diary? She says what happens to her and this Mr. Rienzi. Get Captain Finley over here right away. And tell Alan we're getting out the final edition, as usual. Yes, sir. Why didn't you go to the police, Mrs. Schmidt? Police? I do not know police. I know newspaper. This newspaper. For 31 years, I know this paper. I come to America. I wish to be a good citizen. How to do this? From newspaper. It shows me how to read and write. My Bessie dies. You do not say bad things of her. You do not show bad pictures of her. You try to find who hurt my Bessie. Good. I help. I think what to do. I go on subway. I ride all day. I think. By doing this, you may be in danger, like your son. You're not afraid. Your paper's not afraid. I am not afraid. Hello, Mrs. Hutchison. Or is it Mrs. Schaefer now? Where is he? In the press room. Has he lost the paper? Yes. What's he going to do? Get out the last edition. And it ought to be quite a paper. But then what? Look for another job, I guess. He's it, Mrs. Schaefer. Hello, Alec. This is it, huh? Yeah. Looks like the last one. Yes? Who? I'll put the call through. Hutchison? Hello, baby. How am I feeling? I hear Mrs. Schmidt come in to see you. That's right. That's right. There's some loose cash here belongs to you, $200,000 worth. Uh-huh, and there's something else, too. What diary? Who's going to believe what a little tramp writes to herself? Wait a minute, don't hang up. Here's some advice for your friend. Don't press your luck. Lay off of me. Don't print that story. What's that supposed to be? An order? If not tonight, then tomorrow. Maybe next week, maybe next year. But sooner or later, you'll catch it. Listen to me. Print that story, you're a dead man. It's not just me anymore. You'd have to stop every newspaper in the country now, and you're not big enough for that job. People like you've tried it before, with bullets, prison, censorship. But as long as even one newspaper will print the truth, you're finished. Don't give me that fancy double talk. I want an answer. Yes or no? Yes. 
yes or no? Hey, Hutchison, that noise, what's that racket? That's the press, baby, the press. And there's nothing you can do about it, nothing. 